In the world of Subnautica, full of fantastic glowing fish, huge underwater caverns, and giant monsters that want to eat you, there is one creature which stands out above the rest. Today we're going to be talking about the largest, the one that resides in the deepest depths and perhaps the most intricate creature to the story of Subnautica out of all of them. That's right, today we're going to be taking on the Sea Emperor Leviathan. I'll be telling you everything we know about these creatures, their behavior, their looks, where they would reside, where they're not all dead, oh whoops, spoilers, how you can get to them, and finally I'm gonna lay out some questions which we don't exactly have the answers to, but maybe we could discuss them down in the comments. And I have to put a warning right here that this video will indeed be covering potential spoilers for not only the world of Subnautica but also the story, so if you haven't played the game yet and you do not want to have it spoiled, please do yourself a favor, stop this video for now, go play the game and then come back to it and see if you can learn anything more. Anyways, with that out of the way, let's just jump right into the water, put our scuba gear on and let's go. Now to start us off, let's talk about the appearance. As, as I already mentioned, being a leviathan and having it in the name kind of incites that this creature is huge, but that does not even begin to describe it. It is in fact the largest living species of fauna currently known in the world of Subnautica, and it by far exceeds all other organisms that we encounter in the game by size. I wasn't able to get a really accurate comparison, this one is fan-made, and it's not entirely accurate, as for example the reef bags have been increased in size ever since this picture was created, but it does give you a solid idea of how the Sea Emperor stacks up compared to the Dragon or compared to the Reaper. Now the body of the Sea Emperor is somewhat similar to the Sea Dragon, especially in the lower half, being colossal of course, and having very predominant armor plating all around the top of its body with only small spots left unarmored on the belly. The body is mostly pale brown in color with a few shades of green especially around the head and all of its tentacles in the back are adorned with bioluminescent cyan um, bulbs, for the lack of a better word. The head is comparatively small to the rest of the body, having a much less aggressive look to it compared to for example the sea dragon, being somewhat reminiscent of a hammerhead shark or perhaps a sea turtle. On its face it has four binocular eyes which glow the same color as the bulbs on its tail, and two antennae which spring from what I would presume to be its nose, each adored with a small green blob. On the tail we can find seven long, still slim tentacles, and the same way as with the sea dragon, the middle one of them is the longest, sea emperor uses these to propel itself around the world or I guess in our case around the aquarium. Instead of having the raspers which the sea dragon has, the sea emperor has these sort of paddle like limbs which somewhat resemble a sea turtle again, which it uses to propel itself at surprisingly high speeds. Now, I've already mentioned the aquarium, so let's talk about where you can find this creature. In the world of Subnautica, it often goes that if you want to find the more dangerous and larger things, you need to go deeper. Now, the Sea Emperor isn't necessarily dangerous, but the depth thing still stands. In fact, in order to find him, you need to go well below the 1000 meter mark, all the way to the primary containment facility within the active lava zone. Now, if you manage to sneak past the sea dragon, you will be required to produce a blue artifact, one of which you can find in the previous alien base within the inactive lava zone. And after entering the base and scouring around for a little, you are going to have to produce yet another blue artifact to finally be able to access the aquarium where the sea emperor is being held. Now, despite its colossal size and somewhat scary appearance, at least when you first see it because of its size, the Sea Emperor is actually not hostile to the player, and according to the databank entry, they only feed on microorganisms, somewhat similar to the adult ghost leviathans, even though those don't have any issues with killing the player instantly. This particular specimen will mostly just swim around the aquarium wherever you're in there, doing large circles around the outside, and whenever you approach its eggs, which can be found in the middle of the chamber, it will kind of set itself down and observe you carefully as you manipulate them. There isn't much else to say about the behavior as we don't see this creature interacting with a lot of the wildlife because it's not hostile, but an interesting point of note is that all the other creatures within the aquarium where the sea emperor is are actually docile and will not attack the player even if you try to attack them. The sea emperor itself cannot be attacked, 
it will ignore any shots from your stasis rifle and you will not be able to get close to it with a knife enough to cut it because it has a little bit of invisible wall surrounding its body. Now let's talk about the story here a little bit and it's time to go really deep into the spoilers. The Sea Emperor Leviathan that we see is rumored to be pretty much the last one of its species as the Kerab virus which was brought in by the Precursors has eliminated their source of food supply and has caused the species to pretty much go extinct besides this one surviving individual. The Sea Emperor will contact the player several times during the game using telepathic speech. Now it is said and it is very likely that the Precursors were unable to be communicated with in the same way as the Sea Emperor couldn't explain to them how to hedge the eggs which was the main reason why they decided to capture it. The Precursors realized that the Sea Emperor is the only creature available at that time who can produce the magical enzyme which is capable of curing the Kara virus. Now what they also realized is the specimen they had captured, being the one we find at the aquarium, is because of its poor health state unable to produce any more of this enzyme and they would have to rely on its eggs. Initially there were six of them, however the Precursors took one of them, opened it up and tried to hatch it manually resulting in the specimen's death within that egg. Not wanting to lose what could potentially be their only shot at rescuing themselves from the virus, they put all the remaining eggs into an incubator where they wouldn't die until they could figure out a way to produce the enzyme necessary to hatch them. Now it will become the player's role to eventually hatch these eggs but I will not spoil for you what is going to happen because I do believe that it is something that should be experienced by yourself and I do not want to ruin the surprise. But an interesting thing of note about the Sea Emperor is that it is actually responsible for all the surviving life on the planet as it has trained some of the peepers within its aquarium to travel up and down the vents which are within its chamber used to filter the water and they would carry small bits of the 42 enzyme which was in turn able to maintain areas such as the safe shallows somewhat lush and somewhat sprawling with life. Now for as interesting as this creature is we don't actually have that much information on it mostly because this is supposed to be the final surviving member but there are a few conclusions we can make based on the databank entry and based on its current behavior. Based on their size alone we can presume that these things would probably live in pretty solid depths only coming up to the surface to feed on microorganisms. Based on the databank entry it is also very likely that they lived similarly to whales in what you would call herds with the family often sticking together until the children were old enough to take care of themselves and start their own herds at which points they would separate and go their own way. Now finally just to end this out there's a lot that can be said about the Sea Emperor but I'm just gonna pick out a few interesting facts that I think are kind of cool. First of all this particular individual which we found within the aquarium is incredibly old in fact with the estimate being of 1600 years and it has well passed the usual lifespan of the species at least according to the analysis. Second of all even though the adult Sea Emperor is able to produce the Enzyme 42 the one from the adult seems to only cure the effects temporarily, which is one of the reasons why the precursors were so intent on having the children eggs hatch. Now finally it is unknown whether the telepathic speech which the Sea Emperor uses on the player is also the means of communication within the species, but considering it produces no real tangible sound, this is a very likely theory, unfortunately can never be proven because we do not have any more of them to observe. Also, also on the very final note, if you want to go to bed feeling just a little bit better, even though we think this is the final surviving specimen, there is in fact no way to tell and there is no way to search the outer edges and the great depths of the crater because of the ghost leviathans. So you can always keep on hoping that maybe, just maybe there are big herds with large, adult and small sea emperors somewhere out there swimming and enjoying life. Anyways. That is all I had to say about the Sea Emperor, there is a lot to talk about here but I don't want to spoil and explain the entire story of the game here which I probably could. I want you guys to go out there and experience it yourselves and just have fun with the game. If there is any theory that I didn't mention or if there is any fact that you think is really important and I forgot about it, please put it down in the comments. I wish you all a beautiful rest of today and I'm gonna see you all in whatever next video I make. Bye bye.